what's up guys as you can tell with the hat we are going through this little tiny series of Gurkha's you're the dragon i still have a lot of other you're the dragons that i'm going to be uploading as well and i am pursuing the hunt i'm trying to be as good as my buddies smoke one if you have one and soy sauce assassin or tony and eric they are currently doing the series that they kind of coined it chasing the dragon i'm gonna copy their flow because i can't uh because if they say i'm copying them then i could pull the race card they're both asian and i'm the hispanic if they try to go after me i just claim a minority report them for bullying then i'm the only channel that has you're the dragon stuff <laughs> um we kicked up the legion well it was great when it lasted but as you guys can see with this very beautiful box right here you have da -da -da -da, five cigars this one will be ignored the one where my, my, my middle finger's at this one will be ignored because we already reviewed it the one we're gonna go after today from one of my favorite cigar companies to exist at the moment which is ep carrillo Ernesto Perez Carrillo. Hopefully, uh, no one takes the intro serious because if it was not for my group, I would have never met this amazing man. So as you can see right here, I have an image with Mr. E.P. Carrillo himself. It was an honor meeting him and it's also a great honor to be a part of the group I'm a part of, of Shadow Smoke Elysian. So please, Tony and Eric, don't take my threat in the beginning serious. <laughs> uh, I will call Susan. We're going to go through this cigar. When I. When I first bought this box of the five variety sticks of the Year of the Dragons everything was undisclosed everything and my amazing mentors of cigar reviews which is eric and tony when they reviewed it it was during the time period where everything was undisclosed a couple weeks later they dropped not all of them but few of them they dropped their wrapper and binders and fillers and all that kind of sorts which is kind of cool but this bad boy right here which looks beautiful that black you to the band looks kind of mischievous the wrapper has a little bit of spicy, sweet undertone to it. Ooh, yeah, I feel a little spice in my mouth. Mouth? I just use my no. I digress. So ignore me sometimes. I'm kind of rusty. It's been a little minute since I've done reviews because life is lifing. But there's a sweetness to it, almost like dark chocolate. It kind of gave me like. Oh, the foot. The foot has a little bit more flavor, flavor, scent, scent. The foot has more scent than the actual wrapper. Let's just clip this. Mazatov. Okay. Just from the cold draw, I get raisin. It's like a dry fruit or raisin. But then a little bit of sweetness at the very end. Hmm. Yeah, it's like raisin. Well, 
Let's get into it. There we go. That should sound beautiful. So, Eric and Tony, I'm going to toast it. I'm going to make it ashy. You guys got to listen to the podcast that basically makes all three of us. Me, Eric, and Tony do a podcast, which is owned by Tony. I guest star occasionally. I'm more active on that channel than this channel. I don't do that purposely, but yeah, I'm more active on that channel compared to this channel. For a little while, I'm going to be more active now. But go watch. That podcast. I'll link it in the description below. Okay, I get a little bit of chocolate notes to it. But not as chocolatey. It's more chocolate powder. It's like a gritty taste to it too. I'm trying to like process this cigar. I, I feel like it's lacking a little bit. I, I get sweetness and then just it dies down. And I get like this raisin taste. But then I can't get nothing else. Like the wrapper had like a spicy, you know, had a spicy scent to it. I felt it felt spicy lingering in my, you know, my nostril. It felt like I sniffed some spices, but I taste no spice. Okay, never mind. There is spice. But more as in a feeling of spice. Something it's not something that will burn your nose. Like for example, let's say you have like buffalo wings, or you have habanera, or a ghost pepper, or Carolina Reaper, like those those stuff has like a heat index. That's what this kind of has, a heat index. It's not like a spice as in like smoked paprika. I forgot what you call that seasoning you put on pizza. It's, it's always in pizza spots. It's, it's like these flakes you put on your pizza that makes it have a heat intensity and a spicy intensity. This is just heat, spice heat. This is just spice heat. So the ash actually looks very nice. A nice, mostly white, part grayish. Yeah, this cigar is kind of cutthroat, as in it's just singular, just for the first third. It's like I'll get other flavors, but it's like in and out. Like the restaurant chain. The draw is phenomenal. The smoke output is great. Construction is very well so far. Let's like continue with the cigar. Let's get into the background of the cigar. Let's get into the characteristics of the cigar. This is a Toro. This is a six and five eighth inch cigar by 54. Why that number? I don't know. Highly specific, but part of me technically feels like this cigar is six and a half. When you do cut the cap, you're knocking about, you know, a few centimeters. So technically speaking, it could be a six and a half inch cigar because you cut the cap. I digress. But for it to be six and five eighth by 54, this beautiful cigar, as you can see right in front of your face, the wrapper, this beautiful dark chocolate cigar is a Mexican San Andres. Inside of this cigar that holds this filler together, it's Ecuadorian Connecticut. Lastly, you have the filler. That gorgeous white grayish hue is Nicaraguan and Dominican. 
That is what this cigar is all about. Since this is a Maduro, they also disclose the strength, which is essentially medium to full. That is all the information on the cigar, other than the fact that this is a Gurkha and E.P. Carrillo collaboration. Okay. I'm at the one six mark. Not at the one third yet. I'm at the quarter mark. Not at the first one third yet. But the spice level is kind of rising up there now. It died down. I'm getting this earthiness to it. Very, very light hints of leather but it's just like it dilutes and it comes back alive dilutes come back alive and ever so often you get like a little small burst of like chocolate powder not milk chocolate not dark chocolate more like this chalky chocolate try to say that five times fast chalky chocolate chocolate, chocolate. i can't do it i'm getting chalky chocolate like nesquik ovaltine that type of chocolate. They're more like processed. We also have this grittiness to it. Like it leaves a little aftertaste in your tongue after you exhale your puff. Either through retrolink or just regular puffing. There's like this line of you feel like residue on your tongue that it's slightly bitter. Since I do possess all five Gurkha dragons, I'm gonna do a ranking of my favorite dragon, the Gurkha line, to my least favorite dragon. Personally, I feel like they use ingredients of some of their core lines of the EP lines, and it just feels watered down. Let it be an Encore or La Historia or a Pledge. I feel like it has components of one or two of those lines, but it's also watered down. And this flavor, but there's not. Ooh, wait. I'm pretty sure it entered the second, third. And it's kind of changing on me. I had a, had a lot of spice in the last retro. So I'm getting into the second, third. It started to change a little bit more. I'm just getting a little bit more flavors. Now I'm getting some chocolate. This time is not chalky chocolate. This is actual like milk chocolate. Towards teetering towards the edge of like dark chocolate. Give or take, I would say at like the 55% chocolate you could get. I forgot the company's name, Lindell, Lindell, Lindalt. I don't know. That company that has the percentage of cocoa in front of it. It's like 55%. It has this creaminess to it, but it also has a little more of a deeper, darker chocolate to it as well. So it's a combination of both. There's a spice level that came back. This time, it's not heat level, it's actual spice. Cause I felt a little discomfort from a retro because I got used to no spice levels. And then it just came out of nowhere. Not sure the remaining second third is gonna be that way, but it just came out of nowhere. But the last retro just did wasn't there. Now, yeah, it went back to spice heat, not spicy. I don't know, part of me feels kind of disappointed because I expected like a lot of flavors, a lot of different components, something that was going to be like interesting and something I wanted to talk more about. Just how like the first group of dragon I had, had all these elements that dance with each other. This is very one sided. Like that earth note is pretty good, but I don't like the taste it leaves in your mouth after you're done retroling or doing a regular puff. It's just something that's just not really for me, but it's not a bad cigar. It's not horrible. It's not amazing. It's not bad. It's good, but nothing that is 
groundbreaking or earth shattering or like oh my god it blows the first year of the dragon i had like this one the red band one it's very linear when it comes to flavor notes it's just like you get one note and that's it i'll see you guys in the last third Woo! i'm at the last third and the spice level is actually coming up it's like a black pepper in it Flavor notes has been consistent the whole entire way. It's more of the spice. The raisin in the beginning, gone. The sweetness, gone. Now it's just this barnyard, earthy, murky, dirtiness. That's all it is in the last third. With this introduction of the spice that comes out of nowhere. There's some retros I'm like, oof, damn, the spice. And some retros like, okay, where's spice? It is now that one had no spice. Let's go through my ratings. If my system goes by appearance, construction, then taste notes. Taste notes obviously is way more impactful compared to appearance and construction. You can have the most beautifully constructed cigar with the most beautiful design box wise or band wise or anything. If the cigar is shit or tastes like shit, it's shit. Taste notes is 2.5 times the value. So let's get into it. So with the construction, it held up. Did it really need to relight it? Did it really need to touch it up? It's still consistent. The ash is white grayish, mostly white. Draw is almost flawless. Smoke output is very nice, very potent. I'm going to give the construction. I'll give it an eight. It's nice. It held up. I removed both the bands. No tears, no cracks, no nothing. The bands came out perfectly fine. The cigar burned well. When drawing the cigar, even towards the last third, typically you have more of a heat intensity towards the end because the embers. Since this is a long filler, it's been burning evenly both internally and externally. It's a slight, not really much of a canoe, but it's slightly uneven on one side. Other than that, it held up well. When it comes to appearance, yes, the band, I actually am in big favor. I'm actually in big favor of this combination of bands. You have the two dragons on the side. You also have the secondary band saying bye by Ernesto Perez Carrillo. But that black color scheme is beautiful. The only other issue I have, it's not going to knock a lot of points out. It's just how the cigar kind of looks. Like some parts is darker, whatever. Could be from the aging process, whatever. Isn't it the most beautiful looking cigar when it comes to appearance? But that band is gorgeous. So I'm going to give the appearance of the cigar a 7.5. For taste notes, I'm going to give it a five. I like spice. I don't mind it. Sometimes it takes me off guard because I don't prepare for it. But I tend to like spicy cigars. This cigar goes from a spicy heat to an actual white pepper or black pepper spice. Then it just goes away for the next five, ten puffs. Then it comes back, then it goes away, then it comes back, then it goes away. Then I'll get a sweetness, then it goes away. Then I'll get a sweetness, then it goes away. Then I get this flavor, and it goes away. So it's not a consistent cigar. Most of the time, and I mean most of the time, it's a very linear taste note to it, which is like this grittiness, this earthy grittiness. That's majority of what I'm getting. I will get a little hints here and there of the raisin. I'll get hints here and there of the chocolate. And then that just disappears. The main forefront is his grittiness. I did enjoy the Amazon Basin. It wasn't the best cigar in the world. I could understand it. Why people might like the earthiness to it. It's cool. I like it. It's an all right cigar. This one, same thing. It's all right. 
I just wish the other flavor notes that's in it that was actually quite nice wasn't so watered down. With that being said, I'm going to give the flavor notes a five. So after doing the math, you get a 6.2. That seems kind of fair. This cigar is not horrible. I wouldn't mind having another one, but for the price point of $25, I don't feel like it's worth 25 bucks. Maybe if it's the same price racket as their core lines, as in the prequels or the historias, like in that $11, $13 range, I kind of see it. But for 25 bucks, you better off going with the original Year of the Dragon of Gurkha. This is something I wouldn't mind having, at least in my arsenal, but it's not something I would desire to smoke. I would look at it, think it looks pretty, look past it, and go for another stick. It would definitely look amazing in my humidor. Maybe a box of it because of just how gorgeous it looks, but I don't think it's worth a box. I think it's fine to have a few singles of it just to have for collection's sake. See, now the raisin came back. I don't know. I'm going to stick to my rating, 6.2. It's an all right cigar. You want to try it yourself, form your own opinion. That means this cigar is still an ash, but barely passing that mark. Hope you guys enjoyed today's review of The Year of the Dragon by Gurkha and E.P. Carrillo. Until next time, as always, I love your faces, and I'm out. Peace.